States. I know you know it well. Now it's looking to be a real winner on Wall Street. In fact, the ticker symbol WNNR. And we have a lot to talk about here. The Andretti Acquisition Corporation just went public. And here to discuss this is the chairman and co-CEO, Bill Sandbrook, who is joining us. Congratulations to you and the team. And I know you and, and Michael Andretti have been friends since childhood. Um, there is a lot to discuss here. So you basically are becoming a blank check corporation and looking at this total addressable market of $3 trillion in all of the things such as racing, luxury, and more, um, you know, auto aftermarket. Tell me a little bit about the excitement that you're feeling now. You did it. Yeah, well, now the hard work starts, uh, you know. Because as you say, uh, 40 companies plus have been now petitioning Andretti Acquisition Corp to partner with them, work with them. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure you want to stay within this area that you're talking about in the world of racing, this mobility sector. Do, are you leaning towards any of the companies at this point, or is it just really combing through the balance sheets one by one? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, and so I wish you guys the best of luck with this. I know you'll come back and be telling us great stories, how you're disruptive in technology and disruptive in auto racing and auto service. And Well, if you look at the cybersecurity space, Nicole, uh, they've been down overall in the last few months. Your latest news here. So you'll give us updates periodically, I'm sure. Thank you and congratulations to you and your team and wishing you continued success. Dr. Wakas Al-Sadiq, Chairman, CEO, Founder of Biotricity. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Coming up, but the growth trajectory looked pretty good. Tell me a little bit about Integris. Why is this one our disruptor of the day, George? Yeah. Yeah, so people may not be familiar. Thank you, George. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. You Showing too, Nicole. Thanks. Integris today as our disruptor. Thank you, George Sillis. Coming up next, it's the, three. the CEO, Fraser Atkinson, is with us with some big news for of our network. You've been on here before, um, an exciting IPO in the NASDAQ uh, back in 2020, but 2020. But now is a time about West Virginia and some school buses. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with the company now. Well, last week really could be a whole new business. So as you start in West Virginia, and it sounds like you're picking up some speed there, you know, having a, a manufacturing there, and I want to hear how many jobs um, when you're looking at these goals for a couple of years out. At the same time, are you expecting the supply chain issues? And you tell me what you're seeing. Are you at SoFi, which I saw at one point was up 17% this morning, it's off those highs, but still double digit gains here. What's going on with SoFi? Yeah, nice gains for SoFi. I mean, this is a... Thank you so much, George. Great explanation today and a great look there and example trade for SoFi Technologies, S-O-F-I, our disruptor of the day with George Sillis. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Central, thank you both for being with us. So, Pedro, I'll start with you. Is this a win-win? It's definitely a win-win, you know, it's... A Daniel, as a gentleman who is fully immersed in the world of technology, were you taken aback by how big this deal was? I mean, you know, it's sort of fall off your chair kind of money. When you talk about $69 billion, it is the biggest in, the, you know, in cash. It is the biggest in tech. Good to see you both. Thank you. A great conversation. Daniel Rabino and Pedro Palangiani, thank you very much. And thank you, friends, thank you. for joining me here. Um, you know, it came in higher than expected when you look at that number of 286,000. Tell me a little bit about the big picture. Are things getting better or not? Somehow feel empowered that uh, we're seeing this churn and this quit rate that you're talking about at these record highs. They somehow feel comfortable to quit and get another job. That, right, there's just not a match in many cases. Um, which is not good. And at the same time, we talked about during the holidays that you were paying more for what you didn't want um, just because of inflation and supply chain issues. So, and now you have that rent uh, moratorium coming to an end as well, where people were able to push off rent and mortgages and things like that. 
that's also coming to an end. And so the Fed here has a lot to consider. The Fed has been very hawkish. You know that we're hearing talk of four to six. You have several names that you like very much. And um, when you look at restaurant brands, you like that one less so. Tell me a little bit about some of the names you like versus the others. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me today, Nicole. The, the names I'd say we like, you know, really focus. As I'm thinking about this, um, Andrew, I really wanted to focus on some of the other inflationary factors that, you know, I'd love for you to talk about. It's not just the wage growth, but all kinds of inflation, the cost of food and how it hit. Leave it right there. Gentlemen, great conversation. You made me hungry. Andrew, Nick, nice to see you. That's a bad old joke. I shouldn't have even said it. But thank you both very, very much. I appreciate it. Andrew thank Charles and Nick Setien. Thank you.